We continue with our discussion on advanced financial modeling and in this particular video we are going to discuss about something called as Monte Carlo simulations. Now simulations are extremely handy tools that could help us uh, kind of create a similar real world scenario on Excel and help us gauge or understand whether uh, the results we expect on paper are what real world scenarios would typically give us to be right. So that's basically how we how we kind of talk about simulations. So our discussion in simulation terms would involve a particular case where we are saying sometimes we may need to run a simulation to find out if the results being said in a particular investment instrument are feasible or not. Take for example an investment product that says that if you invest rupees 1 lakh in an asset with a mean of 20% and standard deviation of 18% right you will be basically given 10 times 10 lakhs if the total investment value crosses 8 lakhs. So if it crosses 8 lakhs at any point of time at the end of the tenure of 10 years right at the end of 10 years then basically you will get 10 lakhs else you'll get 3 lakhs right. So this is a sort of a, a contingent payoff which says that if the value of this 1 lakh invested goes above 8 lakhs you get 10 lakhs else you get 3 lakhs right now what can we do to evaluate this kind of a product what we'll try and do is we're going to simulate this 10 year return over 100 or 1000 times to arrive at an expected value that we see right so let's go to our excel file and let's note down what is being said we are being told that the mean return is 20 percent we are being told that the standard deviation is 18% and our initial investment is 1 lakh rupees right that's what has been told to us we can also probably let's say we start with a broader assumption we say we invested for 1 2 3 and let's actually format all these as 1 2 for 10 years and let's say just for argument's sake we assume a 20% return here the next year value will be 100,000 into 1 plus 20% and then the subsequent year will follow at whatever rate of return we assume here so let's say we say 10% it will give us that value right now the question in our mind would be how do I know what return would nifty or this instrument whatever this asset is what return this asset would give me next year there is no direct way of finding it out because that's future how do you predict the future right and you could have any probability of any kind of return right this is where we introduce a function called random right so there's a function called rand which randomizes and throws a value let's understand the function it's called rand and you click on OK. If you click on the function around this, what does it throw? It returns a random number greater than or equal to zero and less than one evenly distributed, right? And it changes on recalculation. No arguments. If I keep pressing F9, it will keep changing the number every time, right? It's a number between zero and one. So that's a certain probability, right? Now, if you recall, we had said that if I take this function and if I take this curve and put a return number on this assuming that the returns are normally distributed if I put a return number on this I can find the probability probability is a number that is between 0 to 1 and right probabilities are kind of you have evenly distributed and there was a function that we said can find out the return on this curve given a probability right we remember that there was a function called norm dot inverse right this will take an input as a probability and tell us what is the return so let's say I, I put in a number called norm inverse and I open this up and let's say the probability is let's say 40 percent the mean is given to us the standard deviation is given to us so if the chances are 40 percent as in if on that curve we are looking at the probability of 40 percent that's that's what we are saying that the area of the curve 
is 40 percent then this return would be 15 percent that's what we are saying right now in real life we don't know what this 40 percent is this 40 percent is random because the stock market can give you any value right so what we will do is we will use this norm in function but within this norm in function we are going to randomize the probability right and that will give us the return so what do we do look at this carefully what we are saying is that I'm going to use the norm inverse function here and in this the mean is kind of given to us let's freeze that the standard deviation is given to us let's freeze that the probability we are going to randomize it right I'm going to put rand there so what it does is it gives a volatile value what does a volatile value mean it changes every time and so the return also will change every time right I don't know what reality is and the return I find in the first case is a number called 1% if I drag this down this could change now the returns that will come will come in terms of a normal distribution so there is a 68% chance that the return will be between this plus one sigma and this minus one sigma if I do this hundred times it's expected that 68 times the number would be between 3 and 38 and 2 percent right that's what the that's what the function says that's what the normal distribution curve says right so these returns which are coming now are going to be distributed in terms of normal distributions and if I keep pressing F9 I'll keep getting various values that will come with a certain probability all the time right and that gives me the portfolio ending value now the portfolio ending value could be 772 it could be 677 I press F9 a few more times sometimes you could have a scenario where you get a randomly high portfolio value so all these are possible or probable paths in the future I don't know what these paths would work out to in real life you could have a value of 2 lakhs you could have a value of 6 lakhs you could have a value of 8 lakhs and we are saying if it is 8 lakhs or above then you're going to get 10 lakhs for your 1 lakh rupee right now comes the simulation part so what we are trying to do is either I press F9 100 or 1000 times I can keep pressing it and record each of these values manually and then try and take an average to understand okay does this make sense right but that's extremely tedious so rather than doing that we're going to run what is called as the Monte Carlo simulation and so for that what we are going to do is I'm just going to introduce one two three four and you see every time I put a number it changes right? and let's put this equal to one and just drag this down to this and let's say we want to put in 1000 instances Right, we want to put in 1000 instances of this so we're going to go all the way up to where have we reached 993 another few so that's 1000 total 1000 instances we are going to put in right what I do is here I link this value which is the portfolio value whatever that ending value we are getting I'm going to link it here and now we're going to use a Excel trick we're going to use a function so I'm going to select this entire thing all the way down I'm going to use something we've used for sensitivity analysis data tables right so we're going to use a data table and when we use a data table in this here we're using a one-dimensional data table there is no row input cell the column input cell just pointed to any cell any cell in the in the data just put it anywhere put it here for example any cell outside the discussion and click on OK and when you do that what you realize is you actually have values populated all the way through to your thousand iteration what are these thousand iterations if I press F9 these values are going to change what are these 1000 iterations these tell you that if you do the same exercise 1000 times what is the likely value in those thousand simulations or thousand iterations right can I find the 
average ending value i can do that that's going to be nothing but the average of these numbers right and we find the average to be about 622000 i can do this multiple times so the first 1000 given average of 622 if i press f9 once if i press f9 once it will give the next 1000 iteration that again gives 6 lakhs 615 618 622 you find these numbers are around that 6 lakh 15000 6 lakh 20000 kind of a mark most of the time it's not really moving away from there so however how many ever iterations i do what i will realize is that in this kind of a simulation you will not in most cases be able to arrive at a number that is uh, closer to 8 lakhs so while the product claims that if it crosses 8 lakhs you make 10 lakhs in most likelihood it's not going to cross because the number of times you keep reiterating it it still gives you the same value of around 620 and that's the average value so if the returns are normally distributed it's expected that at the end of 10 years you're going to kind of have a similar return around the mean that's the broad probability you're working with right i can also find out annualized return right which is nothing but CAGR correct how do I find CAGR that's the final value divided by the initial value raised to the power 1 by 10 minus 1 and I'll find that the CAGR number that we calculate is going to be very close to the actual average I can keep doing that you'll find the CAGR is going to be close to the 20% average because that's what is expected so unless you believe that historical parameters around mean and standard deviation are going to change dramatically this instrument in most likelihood is not going to give you a value of 8 lakhs at the end of 10 years and hence consequently you should avoid using this instrument because most likelihood whatever value you end with you will probably end up with 3 lakh rupees if you end up with a value of less than less than 10 lakhs you're going to less than 8 lakhs you're going to be given 3 lakh rupees right that is basically an example of a monte carlo simulation that's how basically we introduce simulation into it so we use two three functions here we use the function rand which gives a random number between 0 and 1 we take this input as the probability input in our equation for norm inverse right so that gives a normal normal in normal distribution inverse value this number is the return value that comes out every year right this number is the return value which comes out every year based on this return we end with a portfolio value once we do this we get here and we do the data table function and we just select 1000 rows put the data anywhere the table the column input cell anywhere in the sheet just link it to that trick excel to calculate this and you get a host of values going all the way up to thousand entries of this entire simulation when we take the average we find the ending value and that will tell us whether we are whether or not the instrument looks likely to make money for us in this scenario right that's basically what we mean in this particular video of monte carlo simulation thank you